York and Wharton Mill has seen many workers over the years. This has included owners such as Herbert Southgate, millers such as George Blackmore and our mill team volunteers at the Museum of East Anglian Life. Through their records and memories, we can understand what milling would have been like throughout the history of the Alton Water Mill. When Herbert Southgate ran the mill in the late 19th century, milling was an exhausting job. Day-to-day -day life would have been very long and very hard. Would have been 12 hour days, maybe longer. Um, very dusty, very dangerous. Their day would start milling about six and all depend on demand, what they've got to do. They could go, some mills, some millers work through the night with a, an assistant. All depend if they've got the water and the workload, they would go 24-7 and it was six and a half days a week in those days. No weekends off, no holidays. <laughs> they were quite respected, they were learnt, quite well educated by their standards and they were quite well off if they had a good mill with a good catchment of water and a lot of corn to grind they could make quite a good living and it was quite short-lived because of working conditions, dust and that they normally died of lung disease between 40 and 50. You would start work with a miller as a boy or a girl at 12, 13 and learn the trade and then if you was lucky enough to be offered a mill to rent or you just worked for a miller through your life but it was a hard life. By the turn of the century this was beginning to change. Alton Water Mill was run as a grist mill. This meant that milling was only done for local farmers when they needed it. At this time, George Blackmore was the miller. George Blackmore had a daughter, Agnes, who remembers working at the Alton Water Mill as a child. My father was the miller there for over 36 years. And uh, during that time, we all had to help. We did various jobs to help him such as uh, probably mending up a few sacks, sweeping up the mill floors. We used to have to stand at the bottom of the ladder and chain on the sacks to save him running up and down. When we were in the mill putting the sacks on the chain, you had to be careful that you really put them on secure because if not halfway up, the sack would come off and all the corn be on the floor. That used to cause quite a commotion. In 1933, George Blackmore's son came to work at the Alton Water Mill, assisting his father. He also remembers the work he did there. Well, there wasn't a full working day. The stock took up most of the time, but the mill itself, there was very little trade. Sometimes a farmer would come and bring a couple of dozen sacks to grind, and he might be the only one for a week. And then another week, perhaps uh, you'd get two, they'd all be little lots except after harvest and then there'd be a rush everybody would want some corn ground so then I used to get about three perhaps three or four days grinding I used to come in in small amounts and I used to just take it in onto the bottom floor and hoist it up to the sack floor and, and I had plenty of time you see because it, it used to take nearly an hour to grind a sack of corn to, to, to get a perfect grind, you know, to get a real good meal. And I had to do it because Father used to come and have a look sometimes and criticise. <laughs> Today, the Alton Water Mill is run by a team of volunteers. When I retired, I wanted something to do, and I thought, well, get involved in a water mill and try and keep it running. Um, the engineering fascinates me. Whereas, you know, everything is balanced and runs dead true. And it was all done by hand. It's incredible. I enjoy meeting the public the most, I think, and answering their questions so that they have an idea when they go home how a water mill works.